So welcome everyone. Uh, I welcome you all uh, to the launch of our session on overcoming unconscious biases at work simulation. Uh, according to a recent study in cognitive sciences, uh, the numbers show that for an average number of uh, people, we have approximately 11 million pieces of information which, are, which we are receiving per second. Now, out of this whole lot, uh, it is only about 40, of, uh, the 40 pieces of information that we are able to consciously uh, you know, interpret and decide, which leaves a huge 99% of this information falling on our ears, uh, you know, being actually uh, decided through unconscious bias. Right. So sadly, the lack of awareness, uh, you know, uh, of, of this huge amount of information means that uh, we need to be a little more uh, conscious about the kind of uh, decisions we take, uh, how we uh, maybe make our judgments and perceptions about people and situations around us. So in an endeavor to raise awareness on uh, how uh, we can uh, be more aware of our unconscious bias, uh, I'm proud on the behalf of on behalf of Nolscape to uh, be presenting uh, this uh, this uh, webinar on uh, you know how to overcome unconscious biases. And along with me, I have um, two extremely distinguished uh, people who will also be sharing uh, you know their inputs uh, from the LND perspective. So I have with me Neha Sharma. Uh, who is currently heading the talent and uh, learning and culture piece at ATL. Uh, thank you for joining us, Neha. Uh, we are really looking forward uh, to your insightful discussion in uh, a short time. Um, thank you and, for having me, Anusia. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Uh, and we also have with us uh, Tulika Pandit, uh, Pandit, who is our lead facilitator, and she will be taking us through uh, the product and details uh, about our simulation. Uh, Tulika, uh, we will be looking forward to an engaging session with you as well. Thank you, Anu. I am also looking forward to it. Thank you so much. And with that, um, I'm going to quickly share uh, the agenda for our discussion today. Um, I will be starting uh, by sharing a little bit about Nolscape for people who may be uh, connecting with us for the first time. Uh, we will then be looking at, uh, uh, you know, hearing from Neha about her experience and what she has experienced in her role and in her uh, tenure uh, about unconscious bias. Uh, and then uh, Tulika will be running us through our program frameworks and the simulation. Uh, and after that, we will be opening the forum for any questions and answers that you may have from us. Um, a quick uh, technology check. Uh, in case you have any questions at any point, uh, while, we'll, while we will be opening the floor for you at a later point, uh, but be, feel free to use the Q&A panel in case you have any questions from uh, our moderators on our panelists, and we will be glad to answer you. Uh, we will, we have kept ev everyone on mute for now because it's a webinar and we are cautious of time, uh, but do let us know if you would like to share your thoughts at any point and we will uh, try to unmute you and hear from you as well. Right. So with that, let's proceed. Uh, I will now uh, go ahead and uh, talk a little more about Norskip as an organization. Right. Uh, so uh, we believe in uh, experiential learning. Uh, for individuals and organizations, right? Uh, our value proposition uh, for people who connect with us is that we want to build a future capable, uh, capable uh, people-led team and organizations, uh, which is able to engage in learning through immersive programs and through experiential learning. Uh, that would be our uh, you know, endeavor for individuals. And for the organizations, of course, uh, we have the capability to scale at large and to be able to provide to you analytics, uh, which are in depth, which give you a lot of data about uh, individuals who have participated in the learning interventions and what can it say about their capability for your organization. So we help you make those appropriate decisions for your organizations. Um, from the perspective of our solutions, we operate in two segments. Uh, our segment on leading now focuses on what kind of leadership capabilities will allow us to lead 
uh, in the current scenario. And our leading next category focuses on how do you build a digital mindset so that people are ready and future focused to be able to take on their future roles in a capable manner, right? And we also would like to share with you uh, some of the clients we have worked with in the past. Uh, you will be able to see uh, their logos on your screen now. Uh, but to put it in a nutshell, uh, we are present in over 75 countries. Uh, you know, we have delivered uh, sessions for over 300 clients and organizations. We also have strategic partnerships with uh, various B schools and top tier consulting firms. And we have more than 4 lakh learners who attend our program on a yearly basis. Yeah. Uh, these are, uh, this is a quick snapshot or some of our simulations, right, uh, which are again categorized in our uh, portfolio of leading now and leading next. And this is our main uh, focus for providing an immersive, uh, you know, learning for the participants who connect with us, right? Um, from the perspective of talent intelligence, which I just touched upon uh, some time back, uh, our reports and data that we analyze and can share with all of you will help organizations uh, you know, understand the kind of engagement levels, uh, the performance, and the potential of the learning participants who are a part of the programs. It will also help you as an organization gauge the readiness levels of people at various stages. And through our benchmark scores, you can also uh, figure out how or where do the people lie uh, when it comes to competencies across industries and maybe similar organizations that you know, uh, our competitors are in. Yeah. So that's uh, you know, from the perspective of talent intelligence. Uh, I would now like to uh, formally welcome Neha Sharma, who is uh, leading the talent uh, you know, and culture piece uh, at Airtel. Uh, we are fortunate to be connected with you, Neha. Uh, you, know, you come with a vast repertoire of knowledge in L&D. Uh, you are currently uh, the vice president and corporate head at, Bhart, uh, and, uh, at Bharti Airtel, and you have uh, you know, worked in strategic positions as well. Uh, you know, uh, we see you have partnered closely with the CEO to deliver business results, results on strategy-based programs, talent development, succession planning. Uh, so great to have you with us, Neha. Um, I was recently uh, looking at your LinkedIn post where I believe you have just completed 15 years with Airtel, uh, which I feel is a huge milestone. So congratulations on that and welcome uh, to this forum, Neha. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anu. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. So, uh, so Neha, uh, we would like to hear your thoughts on uh, you know, the topic at focus today, which is unconscious bias. And uh, the first question which we would like to really uh, hear from you on is, uh, you know, what are your, uh, you know, what is your understanding about unconscious bias at workplace? Uh, what does your personal experience talk about from, uh, you know, what you have observed in and around, you know, Airtel or other organizations when it comes to unconscious bias? Sure. I know, I think just to begin with, I'll pick up from where, you know, your introduction right at the beginning, right, that this, there is no right or wrong of this. The fact is that every time we make a decision, our background, our culture, the way we've been brought up, our life experiences really impact uh, you know, the objectivity of those decisions that we take. And therefore, over time, our brain sort of developed the ability to quickly process all the information that's around us, in front of us, not in front of us, yes. uh, and actually create shortcuts to navigate all this vast information that's there with us, right? So I think Absolutely. to start off, I just want to say that this is not about being right or wrong. It's just about being conscious of some of these unconscious biases that we might have. Uh, and as a result, over time, be a little bit more objective in our decision making, in our thinking, right? So, so I think that's really where I wanna begin uh, from. Uh, and frankly, I think um, there are, uh, uh, it's quite natural. Um, I've fortunately been lucky to work in a place that puts performance and passion above everything else. Uh, and therefore, my experiences, frankly, haven't been 
uh, fortunately as stark as a lot of other people may have experienced but i think some because of our social conditioning creep up quite naturally right so um if i had to just pick up a few examples uh, uh some time ago we were in a, a leadership conversation and i was the only woman in the room right and uh, uh, there was a box of sweets that somebody had brought in from their trip back home and the box of sweets was loaded with ghee Uh, so it required a little bit of tact in opening it up and serving it to people, right? Uh, and the minute that conversation came to sharing that box of sweets, mm-hmm. I had everybody in the room looking at me, right? <laughs> it was like this natural expectation that being the woman in the room, I would be more adept at it, and it I would naturally take the role of opening that box of sweets, right? Yeah. Now all the men in there were very well-meaning men. um they a lot of them have enabled me in my career but this is this was an unconscious bias mm-hmm. because of their conditioning over the many years the what they've seen at home what they've seen at the workplace and everywhere else right so so that's that's an example of gender bias gender unconscious bias i would say i think a similar one is about uh when we think of certain jobs Mm-hmm. how the how typical gender stereotypes come to our mind right if you ask people what does a scientist look like what is the what does an exec, executive assistant look like what does a guard look like there are very typical stereotypes that come to mind and this is not just about women this could be about men and women both right so i think you know those are some some things that that we've experienced Uh, i think another one is about what really good performance means right so a typical conversation would go like this person is a really great performer he or she is on 24/7 right mm-hmm. so this bias this unconscious bias of saying that if somebody is on and available 24/7 yeah. that makes that person a good performer mm-hmm. right so that's another kind uh so i think what i'm trying to get to is that it's not just about i think right now the gender conversation is so active that when we think about this we are actually mostly thinking about our unconscious biases towards gender uh but actually it's beyond that to many more uh, i have had a very senior leader tell me that when they get in into an interview the first thing they ask is the marks of the individual in their 10th or 12th because agar kisi ne us time pe mehnat se kaam nahi kiya hai to you know then they can't do it later on in their life yeah <laughs> despite the fact that the person may have spent 20 years in a role which is relevant and done well absolutely so so i think these are some of the examples uh, in my experience at the time of hiring and when uh, new mothers are returning to work those are the two times when probably these are at their highest um and i think uh, you know if we had to really call out two occasions those would be the ones which one should be really sort of mindful of yeah absolutely yeah. i think uh, thanks for sharing that neha and i think uh, one thing clearly coming out from the examples you're sharing is that it is a largely cultural based phenomenon right uh depending on the country you are in depending uh, even uh, you know which kind of a city you are actually working in uh, what have we actually uh, you know the kind of upbringing we have had i think a lot of these things exist and i think the biggest challenge is that people may be people may never know that you know this is the situation where i may have operated from an unconscious bias so i think that's more reason for us to say that okay uh, this is an awareness which we need to increase uh you know amongst the workforce absolutely thank you for sharing that neha um so to take it further we would also like to hear from you uh what do you feel while you've stated some but uh what could be some of the other repercussions of uh, maybe uh, demonstrating unconscious bias at workplace well i think um they can really impact the way we make decisions right they influence the decisions that we take on people um our hiring uh who we might be promoting uh who we might be hiring who we might be encouraging or discouraging yeah. uh in a team how you deal with people right and i think as a result of all of that you might end up creating an organizations that are a certain type 
So I think the repercussions is about a lack of objectivity in your decision making, mm -hmm. which results in organizations that are of a certain kind uh, yeah. and therefore not inclusive. Uh, and therefore, at some point in time, you will always get compromised on the first principles thinking, right? Because yeah. every time you're taking a decision, every time you're doing something, you're actually kind of being, uh, you know, biased by all of these experiences and thinking that you have uh, in your head. So I think to my mind, uh, probably the whole thing around curbing innovation because you don't have sufficient points of view uh, because you have, you're hiring the same kind of people and you're encouraging the same kind of people. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a lot of organizations going through struggles with um, uh, sustaining women in the workplace, um, even beyond going beyond women and sustaining, you know, all kinds of people in the workplace is actually a result of some of these unconscious biases that we have. Yeah. So I think objectivity in decision making, first principles thinking, curbing of innovation, building a certain kind of team uh, and an organization are probably some of the repercussions that organizations might face. Absolutely. And I think some great points, Neha, uh, I think all very relevant from a process standpoint, right? I think getting a more uh, objectivity to the processes is definitely a key which is getting highlighted in your thoughts, right? Uh, and uh, I'm actually reminded by, uh, uh, you know, a famous incident which happened last year. I'm sure a lot of us would have heard about what happened with Starbucks in one of their outlets in the US, uh, where one of the employees uh, actually called, uh, called in the police uh, because of a conversation that was happening between two Afro-American people. And uh, they later found out that it was actually a legitimate meeting that they were you know, having with each other. Uh, but it was this, this unconscious bias of one person which kind of tarnished the image of the entire brand worldwide. Right, they literally had to, uh, you know, pull their store down. They sent people on training, and uh, you know, the leaders actually apologized multiple times in social media. So, so it just gets to show that it's not just you know uh, your workplace or individual, but it can actually have a big repercussion on your brand as well. Yeah. Absolutely, sure. So, um, so now that we look at. Uh, you know, how important it is to overcome this. Uh, what are your thoughts, Neha, on, uh, you know, some steps that you'd like for organizations to take to operate from a more objective viewpoint? Sure. Um, I think first of all, and I keep saying this very often uh, it with my teams as well, right? You've got to be deliberate about these things because just by having a good, um, you know, thinking and uh, just making sure that, you know, you're doing this uh, by yourself uh, is not something that's going to get you to places, right? So if you want to make this shift, it's about a, making a deliberate effort to taking deliberate actions to making something like this happen. So I think I can't stress the, the importance of being deliberate about this, right? And when I say deliberate, I mean that you've got to set, start from setting expectations in your organizations and the workplaces that you uh, stay, right? Which is really beginning the conversation regarding some of these things. Uh, I think actively building a culture where you can call each other out and it doesn't have to be public shaming, right? It could simply be that after the meeting, you have a one-on-one -on -one debrief to say, look, I noticed this. This is something that you know came out as an unconscious bias. Uh, can we do this differently the next time around? So I think actively striving to build a culture where leaders can call each other out uh, and be okay with it. Uh, I, I think that's another key action. Uh, I think third is, uh, you know, where and this is where we started, right? Sometimes people might not even know that they're doing this, uh, mm -hmm. which is why it's called an unconscious bias, right? Mm -hmm. And therefore training people to actually understand it, observing, observe it, uh, and just being mindful of it. Uh, is probably another, uh, you know, great step uh, to take. Um, I think another one would be about, uh, you talked about bringing objectivity uh, in processes. Uh, but I think what, the plus one on that, Anu, is uh, building that objectivity and then actually exemplifying it, like talking about some of the things uh, that you're doing, right? So, for example, as part of our inclusive culture campaign, one of the things we want to actively talk about is 
uh, hiring of women who are four months, five months pregnant, right? Uh, because you're hiring them for not the life stage that they are in, but you're hiring them for the capability that they bring to the job. Yeah. So one is doing it, but second is also talking about it, exemplifying it so that others in the organization start to also actively think about some of these things. Um, I think in today's world with the whole hybrid working, probably making meetings inclusive mm -hmm. is the simplest way for people to do this, right? Uh, there are some people on Zoom, there are some people in the room, beyond a certain point, you start to forget uh, mm -hmm. the people on the screen. And I've seen uh, schools do this beautifully, right? And students, mm -hmm. little kids imbibing this saying, you know, we have Zoomers and rumors, and we want to maybe make sure that when the Zoomers speak, the rumors are quiet. Mm -hmm. And this is a conversation that I was having with my seven-year-old. So, so if kids can imbibe this beautifully, I'm sure we can, you know, take a book, a page out of that booklet and learn from it as well. Yeah. Uh, and I think finally, just uh, constantly hearing from your employees, asking for feedback, checking in from time to time. Uh, uh, you know, we use a great tool called Amber internally to do some of these things, uh, and that helps us. But really, sort of staying in touch and asking for feedback is another uh, action. So, if I had to really summarize four or five, those would be it. Absolutely. So, uh, again, uh, great points, Neha. I think right from having open dialogues to being able to uh, communicate, you know, with the, you know your employees, your leaders, uh, addressing generation gap. Uh, you know, and being mindful, I think, is, is what's really coming out of this entire piece. So thank you so much, Neha, for sharing your insights. Uh, we will come back to you shortly, uh, you know, when we have some more questions from the audience. Uh, but thank you so much for sharing your views with us. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. So we've heard from uh, our industry expert, Neha, about her thoughts on unconscious bias. And we'd now like to open uh, the floor and understand uh, from our participants today, uh, what is their uh, understanding of unconscious bias? So uh, ladies and gentlemen, you would now see a poll which would be uh, popping up in your uh, chat window. Uh, please take uh, the next 30 seconds to respond to this. Uh, and I already see the number increasing. Um, so the question is, have you ever witnessed unconscious biases at work? Um, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, hopefully we all get to share, uh, you know, and, and uh, don't be biased, just to share what you feel is true. Uh, we would love to hear your answers. Okay, uh, I see that all of our participants have actually answered this and uh, uh, you can actually see the answers uh, in your poll segment, right? It says that uh, close to 90% of the people have witnessed unconscious biases at work. Wow, that's a huge number, right? Uh, and, and just gets us to, uh, you know, say and, and actually in... Uh, you know, corroborates what Neha has actually been speaking about, how, how, about how the culture of an organization, uh, you know, may promote at various stages, uh, you know, unconscious biases, which, uh, you know, observers may be able to see, or you may be able to see as a third party. Uh, and sometimes you may also be projecting it yourself. So thanks for sharing uh, that to everyone. Uh, let's move on to the next question. We have another question for you. Uh, which is now going to come up as the poll. Um, and it says that, have you ever been a victim of unconscious bias yourself, right? Um, okay. Let's give another 30 seconds for everyone to respond. Okay, another five seconds. Okay, great. Uh, so we see that 
you know, the current uh, question we have about 79%, right, who say that they may have, they felt that they've been victims of unconscious bias themselves, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, to be honest, that's very close to a recent, uh, you know, article which Deloitte had published as a white paper on inclusion, on an inclusion research report. And they said that uh, the worldwide, uh, you know, survey that they did uh, really said that 83% of people in the workplace have been a witness to unconscious bias. So that's very close to 90%, which our audience has actually talked about. And it also said that 64% of the people have themselves been the victim of unconscious bias. Um, so I see that, uh, you know, it's very close to the results that, you know, Deloitte has actually published for us. So thank you so much, uh, everyone, for participating in this. Um, I'm sure that, uh, you know, most of us who have been, uh, who have really witnessed and may have been uh, also projecting unconscious bias, uh, you know, this session, uh, you know, that we will be talking about next would really hold a lot of value for us to be able to, uh, you know, remove some of the biases that we may have, uh, you know, when we are performing in our roles. Uh, so with that, um, I think it's time for us to now understand our product, uh, our simulation-based product a little better in terms of the frameworks and concepts. And for this, I will now hand over uh, this platform to Tulika, who will be taking us through, uh, you know, what this product has in store for us. Over to you, Tulika. Thank you, Anu, and uh, thank you so much, Neha, for those uh, wonderful insights, starting from uh, how does unconscious bias works when uh, a sweet, a box of sweet comes along, you know, starting from, uh, and I really like the zoomers and the, rumor, uh, the rumors thing. Uh, it becomes easier when we talk about kids in terms of, because the unconscious bias starts to function as we grow, you know, as we become more adult. Let's talk about our product, our simulation right now, which we call as the unbias. Uh, overcoming uh, unconscious bias is absolutely essential. Uh, what I will take you through the next 20 odd minutes is, we'll talk about the introduction, we'll talk about some use cases. I will take you through our simulation as well and also the report. Uh, but before that, quick tech check, I hope my screen is visible to all of you which says simulation, unbiased. Thank you, Anu, for that thumbs up very quickly. Right, so what is this all about? So we have discussed, we have uh, uh, at this point of time also recognized that yes, 90% of us said that, you know, there has been an unconscious bias. 79% of us said that we have been a victim. At least we feel that someplace there was something running around wherein the unconscious bias came into picture. So what do we do with this? Now, we all understand, we all know that organizations currently are hiring, uh, uh, you know, talent from uh, varied uh, backgrounds, varied cultures, different thought processes, a variety of characteristics. Now, what happens is, uh, which this is a good thing, you know, diversity is actually a good thing, but the focus after a certain time, or the focus is more on diversity and very less on including that, right? So the inclusiveness sometimes takes a backdrop uh, and the diversity comes in the forefront. Now the focus is absolutely so much on diversity. This is where, you know, uh, we tend to, to talk about this into our simulation as well, wherein uh, I think, oh, just give me a moment, yeah. So wherein I think the focus, uh, especially in the global business scenario in the global business environment, it's important that the focus is more uh, towards an inclusive culture towards uh, uh, fostering more belongingness uh, between the people. And this particular simulation course, this, this simulation powered course, as you can see on your screen, is going to help our learners identify these biases. Uh, at a lot of time, we do not even understand that we are having a certain unconscious bias. So how do we understand that? How do we understand that these unconscious biases, they creep into our thought processes they actually uh, you know, orient our thought processes in such a fashion that we take certain decisions. So how do we deal with them? Now, the, if I talk about the value proposition of our simulation, the first thing is it's experiential learning, right? And this actually rely completely on a structured approach. Now, while I take you towards the simulation, uh, it will become apparently more clear to you. Uh, in the simulation, there are certain decisions that one has to take. So when one becomes mindful of what is to be done, 
uh, one becomes absolutely objective of the decisions that, that one needs to take during their workplace. Another thing, the other value proposition, it, it creates an environment that actually promotes uh, uh, one to you, to, for us to become more rational when we are thinking, have more objectivity towards our decision making. So that's uh, about, my, about the simulation that I shall be showing to you in a minute's time. But before then, let's talk about the outcomes. What are the outcomes that we are looking for? There are two major outcomes, learning and business. So when I talk to you about learning outcomes, we are looking into the very first thing is understanding the unconscious biases at work. We understand them. We also discover how does these unconscious biases at work impact the entire work culture, the, the teams, uh, as a matter of fact, recognize these unconscious biases, try and understand what are these unconscious biases that we come across. Uh, the learning outcome of the simulation powered uh, entire course is also that will help us out in terms of leveraging the structured approach uh, so that we can combat these biases. And finally, identifying the ways in terms of how can we become more inclusive leader? Because that's something that we are all focusing upon at this point of time. The business outcomes are, uh, once I understand my, my unconscious bias, I become more, and I start to combat them, I become more rational. So enable rational, effective people management. Uh, it will also help us out in terms of reaping uh, the benefits of having a diverse workforce. It will help us out in terms of understanding that how people who come from uh, you know, different uh, thought processes, uh, uh, varied backgrounds, how their thought processes are different and how can they contribute towards maybe problem solving, maybe decision, maybe making maybe innovation for the organization. Uh, we'll talk about encouraging leaders to create an inclusive environment and finally establish a sense of belongingness in the team. When there are people from different places working together, people from different demographics working together, how do we create that sense of belongingness uh, for the team? Is that that's another outcome that we are looking forward in terms of our simulation that I shall definitely show to you. Uh, some of the places where this can be absolutely wonderful to so use cases, uh, unconscious bias and overcoming unconscious bias is basically for everybody. You know, it's, it's prevalent, it's right there. We need to understand that, we need to combat that. So if I talk about the use cases, the simulation comes very handy when we talk about a leadership journey for the first time managers, even upskilling our leaders from, you know, for middle managers and leaders, uh, even onboarding of absolutely fresh talent or even the ICs of the organization and building a very harmonious and all-inclusive environment where there is a sense of belongingness, where there is absolutely, you know, a, a well understanding between the team members and a great professional relationship. One of the possible journeys that we have for you is uh, overcoming unconscious bias at work, which is the product that we are, uh, you know, we are introducing today. Uh, this is a simulation driven thing, which can, the next step is now that I know I have overcome my unconscious bias, I am working towards a sense of belongingness. The next thing that we can do is we can talk about how do we build trust? That's yet another uh, product, it's yet another simulation powered course that we have, which helps people out in terms of uh, building and understanding trust. Moving further, we can then take them further to create that happiness at work, to create that uh, you know, that, that whole feeling that I feel good when I'm working, I feel nice when I attend a meeting with my teammates, I feel uh, I have, I know there's a learning experience, there is a fulfillment, there is happiness around us. So this is one of the possible journeys we can always create and recreate it as per the requirements. Let me now take you towards this framework that we have introduced in, you know, in, in terms of overcoming the unconscious bias. You know, we, I talked about combating the bias. So to combat the bias, we require tools. We require warriors. And this is what you have in front of you. So we'll talk about this cute framework, which stands for knowing your biases. The very first and the most essential thing, the most important thing, as a matter of fact, is that I acknowledge the bias. I understand the bias. I know that the biases are there. And what are those biases? How can I now work towards it? The next thing is understanding the culture and the context. So empathizing with the person, empathizing with situations, not from my perspective. You know, it's very easy to say, okay, why don't you put yourself in somebody else's shoes and then think, 
but when i put somebody myself into somebody else's shoes i should also you know have and adapt the entire environment that the person is what is the thought process uh, what kind of background the person is coming in that culture that context needs to be understood by us so the cute frame framework point number 2 says understanding culture and context the third one is this is the time when we start to take action i know what my bias is i have understood why these biases are coming now i become conscious about it and i combat it absolutely consciously i combat it and i say no if at all i am thinking like this can do i have facts do i have i evaluated the facts or not what is my why is my opinion like this and then you take action and finally it's not just i who can you know who is uh, going to combat we are going to combat our individual unconscious biases our group unconscious biases together by empowering people by establishing change by being absolutely observant of our team members and noticing their unconscious biases making them aware of their unconscious biases and holding them accountable for all such things and with this cute framework we not only understand the un uh, unconscious bias we actually work towards it so we work towards it in terms of combating it in terms of removing it from our system we can't say that i will not have an unconscious bias but i can always mitigate the effects of those unconscious bias i can always work towards it so that's the framework that uh, we are using for our simulation that's a framework which we are using in the course for us to understand this even better so giving uh, give please give me a quick minute so that i can share the entire uh, simulation with all of you and i hope my screen has now changed and you can see something which says welcome to un uh, unbiased uh, anu is it visible you can just give me a quick thumbs up thank you awesome so let me take you towards our simulation now so that's the sim this is what we'll talk about so the sim's name is welcome to no, it's it's unbiased uh the whole agenda is that you know overcoming the unbiased unconscious biases at our workplace so let me take you towards the storyline it's quite simple so we have uh, an organization known as a2z fit now this a2z fit offers a lot of uh, it's basically into fitness of people so it offers products it offers coaching it offers uh, customized workout for people and so on and so forth they also have that in house store from where people can go and uh, you know uh, make their own purchases now the company is currently aiming to make fitness accessible to everybody you know especially after the the pandemic this has this has been a thought with the company and they want to become an inclusive brand now the ceo knows that the intent doesn't equal the change but the company is still focusing upon providing absolute support and service to their customers now not only as a brand but also as an organization a to z is is constantly working towards uh, inclusive inclusiveness they want things to be absolutely inclusive so every leader is is encouraged to embrace the fact that unconscious biases are quite common and it's possible to overcome them i will take you further from the introduction now and what is the role here so while you are playing the simulation you will be you know you will be adapting the role of the product design lead who's working with the product innovation team and his name is carry and uh, he you know you will also be the member of the unconscious bias combat committee of a to z fit now like every employee you are also expected to be absolutely you know have a keen eye keep an eye out on any kind of biased decisions or any stereotyping that's happening uh, inside the company any discrimination happening inside the company now in the effort to establish a very fair treatment what is expected from you there are some of some very clear points that we have given to you in the simulation the very first thing that is expected from you is to recognize and overcome any biases uh, also understand different perspectives of people review complaints in case you get any complaints create an action plan to solve any issues and finally suggest better habits to you know to your team members so that they become even more you know even more inclusive now for all your help we have also you know you, you will be encountering a character which we call as ltp which is the shorter form for let's take a pause this is the place where you can take a pause revisit think and then take your action 
it will actually help you to reflect on your thoughts about the situation. Uh, this is going to be your team. So we can always click on Zoom and this is your team members. So your team, your peers, your stakeholders. So we have got uh, somebody who's a business con consultant and we also have a stakeholder who is an HR executive. Now in this entire simulation, uh, you will be interacting with your, uh, with your team members, with your stakeholders through virtual mode only, which means through emails or through chat boxes. You are not going to have any physical interaction, no face-to-face -face meeting with them. What are the objectives of the simulation? We are going to give you two kinds of scores. So you, you need to score really well in your Cogni score, which is uh, technically for, uh, you know, for you to be aware, how aware are you of your biases and others' biases? And how is it influencing your surrounding? That's the Cogni score. Action score means uh, what kind of, uh, you know, it, it's gonna actually measure your ability to correct your behavior that is influenced by one of these biases and stay committed to take necessary actions. Now in the simulation, while you are taking actions, you are supposed to take at least get three stars. I always tell, you know, why not go for five, but at least three stars to win the simulation. The time period for the sim is 25 minutes. Let's quickly start the simulation now. So this is a timer which says 25 minutes. Then you have got your Cogni scores. Currently it's on 0.83, which means not even one star. Uh, action scores, similar scores, 0.83, not even one, uh, one star. This is a leadership board wherein when a lot of participants are playing together, it keeps a, in, an insight. It lets people know uh, how others are performing. Any other info that you would require, you can always click on the info tab. And then we talk about mails. As I said earlier, we are going to be having a lot of interactions through mails and through chats. So this is where the mail comes. You will click, keep on clicking on mail so that your mailbox keeps on refreshing and you keep on getting emails in your inbox. This is the mail where if you want to refer to the sent items, the sent mails that you have sent to other people, you can have a quick check into that and, may, and might not uh, you know, repeat the same response. You can also filter them. Let's go and review the first mail that we have got. So all we have to do is click, read what the mail is all about. There is a attachment that is also given. You may click on the attachment and take a look at that. Once you have done this, now you can reply on the mail. Now, when you are replying, you do not have to type anything. Rather, we have given you certain options. So out of these options that you are seeing, you can pick and choose any one. You also have you know, the advantage of uh, adding people to this conversation. So if you feel, okay, I need to add some of others stakeholders. So you just click and just add them and you will see they, have, they are all a part of your CC mail now. Let's just pick and choose anyone and let's see. Now, every time I take an action, there will be a positive or a negative response, which will get added to my Cogni score or to my action score or even both. Let's take a look now. So I have selected one and I'll click on send. And I've got plus pointers, which means my score, which was initially 0.83 has now become 1.13 and I've got one star. Now this particular action that I've taken is a Cogni score action. That's why my Cogni score has changed, but my action score still remains the same. Let's go back to our mailbox. I have got a new response. I can read that response and then I'll go to the mailbox. And I've got a conversation now. So let's click on the respond now. Now this conversation is also automated. It will keep on happening till the time you are asked to take a certain action. So all you have to do is read, be a little patient when you're reading it, try to assess what is being said to you, try to identify the unconscious bias here, but then everything is functioning. And if you'll see, uh, it's a group call. So everybody is contributing towards, you know what, how the week has been and how hectic was it? Did you do something interesting? And uh, there actually comes a point where uh, Alicia tells one of her colleagues that, okay, so you are sing single, you can actually manage. I've got a kid at home. That is definitely an unconscious bias. It be just because somebody is unmarried doesn't mean they do not have any other, any other thing to do. And now out of these responses, we can select anyone. 
So randomly, I'll select this one and I'll say click on reply. And I've got a point three here. So that was a good one. And if you'll see, here comes my LTP. So my LTP says, Tulika, I'll take a pause here. Think about the conversation. If you want, you can again go back and read the conversation all over again. Read it, come back, and then take an action so that you do not. So understand your unconscious bias, combat it, and come back. So this is where uh, my first conversation closes. And if you'll see, my score, my Cockney score has again increased to 1.43. Now, what we have done is this, this entire simulation that you're seeing right now is a mix of conversations and emails and the way that you are going to take actions, the way that you are going to understand each one of them. Let's take one, one more. This was a tracker that was redesigned. And uh, you are going to get a lot of, oh, see, I've got another one. So that's yet another conversation that we have and we can just keep on going on. I will show you this one as well. Now, this is a very different conversation. Uh, I would request you to keep, you know, quickly read it through. So this says that the project plan, that the deadlines are very stringent, right? And uh, the other person, James, is also agreeing with them. And they say, could you help with this? And you again got three different responses. You can pick and choose the one that you feel fit. So I will, okay, I'll take this one. And I'll just click, click on reply. Uh, so they do not like my response. And therefore, the question comes in, are you sure? And the conversation continues. So uh, let me take another one. And I'll click this. And I'll just click on reply. Let's see if they like it or not. And suddenly, my scores increase. Now, why do you feel there is a minus 0.14? And my Cogni score has gone low just because I was not able to identify the unconscious bias in my earlier response. But in my later response, I was able to do that. So this is how the entire simulation worked. Let me uh, stop my screen share here. And uh, so what you have just seen is a quick demo of our uh, simulation. This is how it functions. This is how it works. And then after 25 minutes of you playing, we come across to a report which talks about uh, different levels of how proficient or how role model you've been with your unbiased scores. Were you able to complete your objectives or not? And we are testing four competencies, awareness, sensitivity, both of them tells us about the Cogni scores, behavioral agility and commitment to change, which talks about my action scores. So this, how, this is how the report looks. Our report is going to be absolutely descriptive, telling everybody about uh, uh, you know, what are their awareness scores, sensitivity scores, and so on and so forth, and uh, little feedback from our end, and that's how the report is going to be. So I'm going to stop share my screen right now. That was all about the product. It's back to you, Anusuya. Please take on the lead now. Sure. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that, uh, Tulika. I think it was a great insight into understanding how, uh, you know, a tool like a simulation can actually bring alive, uh, you know, those examples, uh, which make us understand, you know, the unconscious bias, you know, which is happening around us. And um, uh, I think, um, you know, there is also a school of thought which says that it is very hard to train people on unconscious bias because you cannot realize it's happening within you, right? Uh, and I think a very, uh, a huge part of I think what makes our product different from the others in the market is that uh, we are not just giving you, uh, you know, an awareness. We are also sharing uh, some strategies for you to how to overcome this, right? So the cute framework that Tulika spoke about really looks at how do you overcome, uh, you know, your unconscious bias. So thanks for that, Tulika. And uh, it's time for us to now open the house for uh, any Q and A, uh, any questions from the audience. Uh, it could be regarding our frameworks that you just heard uh, from Tulika, or it could also be regarding, uh, you know, the concept of unconscious bias in itself. So um, I'll request all of you to uh, maybe look at the Q&A uh, panel in your, on your screens and maybe use that uh, to ask any questions that you may have. And we will take up, uh, you know, some of those questions now.
Okay, uh, let me start by some of the questions, you know, which I am getting to see on the, uh, you know, chat and the Q&A. Uh, so yes, I see uh, some people asking if, uh, uh, if this can be done, uh, you know, for the team and, uh, and the department report is also possible. Yes, Maheshwari, uh, you, you get individual reports and you can also get a group report for, you know, your entire department or team who is undergoing this program. So that is definitely possible. Uh, I see a question again uh, on, can the case be customized? Uh, I would possibly request someone from the products team to take this up. Okay. Uh, I can address that. Uh, just to clarify, was the question is customization possible? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Of the simulation. Yeah, so customization of the simulation is possible. Um, there'll be different factors involved around the framework, the storyline, and more discussions will have to take place before it is done. Uh, but on a general level, yes, customization is possible. Sure, thanks for that, uh, Raghav. Uh, we have a question from Sakshi who's asking, uh, will we be given different scenarios every time we enter into the simulation? Um, so Sakshi, uh, you know, we recommend uh, honestly everyone going through only one, uh, you know, uh, playing the simulation once. So we have currently built in one scenario, uh, but I think to what Raghav just said, there are options of creating scenarios for uh, organizations which can be taken up, but uh, that would have to be a very customized thing that we do for organizations, right? So we can discuss if there is something specific in your mind, but as of now, we have a one general scenario for all the participants. Okay, uh, will it be possible to unmute someone in case they have a question? Uh, okay, um, sure. Let me uh, unmute uh, Jay Gokani. I think uh, Jay has a question. Uh, yes, Jay, please go ahead. You have been unmuted. Uh, hi, hi, Anshuya. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, Anshuya, I was just wondering if you can get to the slide which showed the report. I think it was the previous one. Yes, this one. Uh, yeah, and uh, so what I'm understanding is that, of course, you get an unbiased score, and then you have the you know the four parameters of competencies and at an awareness, where am I? At, at sensitivity, where am I? Uh, behavioral agility, it says the ability to understand. Can you help me read that? Biases and apply corrections. Okay, fair. Yes. And commitment to change. So I may have, I, I missed about in between about five, seven minutes. So, uh, Apologies if you have to repeat something, but what I was trying to understand is, you did say at the start, you know, that one of the one of the things we we'll, we we'll also understand with this simulation is approach to combat the biases. Yes. Now, what I'm trying to understand if if I as a so I I take care of L and D at a group level for uh, one of the conglomerates, and I wanted to check if I if I have to run this across a group of people, and this is the output I get, right? At an whether at an individual level or at a cohort level. Now, for me, what next after this? You know, so I'm assuming when you say, uh, uh, you know, there are there would be some strategies how to combat the biases, but uh, you know, so this gives me a very good picture of like you know normally when you do a number of assessments, you know, you get the bestest of the data, but you know what you what you do out of the data is what actually takes you where you need to go. Uh, of course, you know this becomes a very key thing. But this actually shows you the mirror where we are, you know, at a leadership level or at a cohort level. So unless you've touched on this point before, uh, then you can quickly summarize. But else, I'll, it'd be great for for me to know how do we go to the step two after this. Sure. So we do have an action planning uh, support. I'll just ask uh, Tulika to elaborate on that. Sure. So uh, uh, Jay, what exactly happens when we are conducting a session there? So there are three aspects. So we learn, act and reflect. So we begin by learning. So if you would have seen that I was mentioning a framework called Qt, which talks right. about knowing your bias, you know, how is it that you are going to combat your bias? So all of those four factors come in. And then we act upon this, which means when you are playing the simulation, all 25 minutes of time, there are going to be multiple situations coming your way. 
Now, in those multiple situations, how are you being aware of what is the, that one unconscious bias uh, through which you are taking a certain step? And not just that. So once that is done, uh, you will take certain steps. You will again go back. You will reassess yourself because that's how you get pointers. Mm -hmm. So both of your scores, maybe the cognitive score, maybe the action score, they're both based on the action that you are taking. And the actions are reflections of are you able to combat your unconscious bias while you were doing the simulation. Now, when the report generates, the report is first telling you what is your overall score in terms of your unbiased serve. You know, were you able to score really high or low? Were you able to combat your unconscious bias or not? And that's when the score comes in. Then we talk about the competencies. Now, what are we doing with this competency is, if you'll see, this is an elaborate version of Q. We talk about awareness, we talk about sensitivity, we talk about behavioral agility, how quick are you able to change yourself? And that's, uh, that's the key framework. Once we are done with the simulation, we are done describing and debriefing our participants upon how to read the report. What are those elements of the report that you see? What, what you're currently seeing on the screen is an absolute brief of the report. The report generally is quite descriptive, which helps them out. So, so let's take uh, talk about awareness. So there will be a question where the facilitator will definitely ask the participants, how do you create more awareness? The report is going to give them a little more insight on how can they, you know, how can one become more aware about things? It's not just like uh, we tell you about a framework and then we leave you. It's about every single aspect. So how do you do that? Uh, talk about talking about sensitivity. It's again the same thing. So they will understand through the report uh, what kind of sensitivity are we referring to? Do we? What are some of those things that we can do in terms of becoming more sensitive? And once the report debrief is done, we talk about an action template. So this action template talks about all the different aspects. It talks about uh, how would you know your bias? Uh, what were the situations? What triggers it? What are the actions that you can take in terms of overcoming this bias? Uh, how did you identify this bias? Uh, did you validate by facts? Did you validate uh, whether this bias is making some sense or not? Do you have data to interpret that whatever your unconscious bias was? Was it correct or not? Uh, we are also talking about 10 different kind of biases while we take uh, the participant through the, through the entire course, starting from age bias to perception bias to, uh, you know, uh, 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 bi biases like anchoring, biases like attribution, halo uh, and the horn uh, biases. So there are around 10 different biases which they will get aware of. And uh, that's how the entire uh, course is gonna be. Does it answer your question, Jay? Yeah, to a fair bit. So I guess what I'm understanding is it would be great if you'll if if you'll have any sample report, the entire you know a document. It'll be great to see to see as to look how the how detailed the output is. I I do get a uh, you know sense of what you're saying, uh, and if I have to just uh, you know just summarize my understanding is so you know it gets more deeper in terms of awareness, sensitivity, these four things where I am, and then also a brief action plan that what can I do you know let's say where my score is low, what can be done. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Yeah. And the only thing what I would what I had in mind when I asked this is, you know, at an, at an organization level, do I have a do I have a okay basis the cohort? This is how it looks like. You know, what is you know apart from the action plan, what the report throws to me? Do you also have something where okay, you know, basis the, the output? You know, what could be a next intervention to make sure the scores is going up? You know, because what happens see, when I get an, when, I, when I get an individual output, uh, you know, a lot depends on me. You know, how how what is my level of let's say accountability and responsibility I take purely because if I need to you know get better at this. You know, so one is as a leader or as a manager, you know, what is the conscious effort I'm going to put right. versus you know when I look at an you know when I am let's say the process owner of owner of you know making sure that this happens. Mm -hmm. you know at, a, at an organization level what can be the thing that can be done to make sure that you know that we let's say over a period of six months to a year's time you know the, the, we can see a delta over there so, so i was looking at that perspective sure so jay i think what we'll do is in the interest of time i think we will have one of our team members get back to you uh, because i think this would require a little more time as of course of course you, right so we will get in touch with you uh, post this discussion, uh, you know, and maybe have a detailed conversation in terms of how this can be taken ahead from here. Sure, that works for me. And I think in the meantime, if you all can, if you all can just have that, if, if at all you'll have a detailed report, it'll be great for all of us on the call, you know, just to get an understanding of the outcome.
Sure, sure, absolutely. We'll Sorry if, if I took more time, but uh, no, our pleasure to address your question, uh, Jay. Thanks so much for answering, uh, for asking. I think it would give a lot of clarity to others as well. Uh, and uh, while we see some other questions, uh, you know, uh, we would uh, really like to also hear from all of you uh, if you feel that uh, you know this uh, simulation-based program can help your organization to overcome unconscious bias. So uh, in the poll that you now see in the next 30 seconds, uh, please let us know if you would be interested in uh, reaching out to us to uh, really uh, get this arranged for your organization. Um, you can type uh, one for a yes and two for a no. Okay, um, thank you so much uh, for answering that uh, question and we will get in touch with all of uh, all of you all who have shown interest in this. Uh, to quickly also let you know what's coming up ahead maybe in the next quarter for all of us is, uh, you know, we will be launching, you know, our products uh, called Powering Successful Collaborations and Managing Difficult Conversations, uh, which would be somewhere in the next quarter. So do look out for announcements on the social media and uh, you can, uh, we can definitely let you know more details on that as we go ahead, right? So um, on that note, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, this was indeed, uh, you know, a, a great platform to share our product. And I'll possibly just end, uh, you know, with another story that comes to my mind about how unconscious bias can actually impact even the products and services that you create. So, um, um, you know, when YouTube was actually launching its uh, video upload feature on the app, right, uh, you know, they noticed that uh, around 10% of the audience members were actually uploading this YouTube, uh, the, their, uh, you know, uh, their videos in, a, you know, upside down manner. And they were kind of baffled, uh, you know, as to why this was happening, uh, because it's simple to just upload your video otherwise. Uh, but it was a large number that was doing it. When they actually scrutinized this entire issue, they actually came up with the understanding that uh, when the, uh, you know, when the, uh, you know, product creators actually created this app, they actually created it from a right-handed user perspective, right? So when a left-handed person actually uses the phone, it actually rotates it, they rotate it by 180 degrees. And that's why uh, you know, while they were uploading it, it was actually, uh, you know, upside down. So uh, a small, uh, you know, uh, unconscious bias, even at that point, uh, you know, resulted in a lot of cost maybe for them to rebuild this app, right? So, so we can actually see the implication of unconscious bias right from uh, individual to org level uh, to uh, the brand level impacting the brand and also products and services that we launch. Um, so just wanted to share that on the closing note. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us once again. Thank you, Neha, uh, for sharing your insights with us. And thank you, Tulika, for taking us uh, you know, through uh, the program uh, context and uh, frameworks. And we look forward to uh, really connecting with you and uh, you know, helping your organizations uh, become uh, more conscious of their unconscious bias. Um, thank you so much once again. And... Um, we can uh, now, uh, if, if uh, we can now end the session and you can actually go ahead, click the leave, uh, click on the leave meeting sign and, uh, you know, exit from the platform. Thank you so much. Have a good day ahead.